and I'm going to show you all the cool things that you can do with the new touchscreen monitor right now. So the first thing I want to show you guys is how to interface with the menu. Uh, again, in the past, we would push these buttons to jump through the menu, and it was kind of tedious. Now, if I want to jump through the menus, I just push on the tab that I want, and then the item that I want to select, so auto-rotate. One negative about this is if you accidentally select a menu item, you cannot jump directly out. You, you have to either press the menu button or press the item that you want. Not a huge deal. I'm sure that'll be fixed in an update. So the second cool feature on this is playing back your images. Typically, in the past, again, you'd have to scroll through them one at a time. With the touchscreen, you swipe just as you would with an iPhone or an iPad. To zoom in, we're going to pinch and spread our fingers apart and we can navigate the picture simply by touching on the screen and dragging in the direction we want to go. It's very nice. If we want to scroll through many images, we can pinch our fingers together, and then we can just kind of swipe through all these beautiful pictures we have of our model here. So navigating through playback is also greatly improved. Third awesome thing that the touchscreen does for us is if we were in our shooting mode, our cue mode, in the past we'd have to touch the cue button and then fumble with all these different settings. Now we press the Q button and we can jump to the setting we want. If we double tap it, we can open up the feature and just swipe through. Here is our shutter speed. So in some ways you can even change your, your shutter speed faster than you could um, with your manual controls. So tap the shutter button, takes you back out. We have many other different features. Again, touch the Q button first and then you can select it, double tap, and it opens it. The way we interact with the live view menu is completely different now because we can touch and focus and even take the picture just on by touching the screen. Something you'll notice immediately is we have um, these different types of shooting data on the sides. And to access our menu in live view, we're going to push the Q button. And so we have menu items on the side. And when you push a menu item, the options are selected here on the bottom. We can scroll through them if there's more than three or four, pretty cool. And the main thing that I really love about the camera is how it focuses. Now on the crash course, I'll have a whole video on all the different ways to use the focusing systems. But for now, let me demonstrate the one that I think is the most useful. We have four different options down here, but there's really about six different options we can use. The first one we have is face detection and tracking. One of the improvements in the focusing systems is that the camera is now continually focusing. And to make sure that we have this turned on, we're gonna to go to our fourth thread tab. Live view needs to be enabled. I'm gonna select that. And continuous shooting has to be enabled. And if you have this turned on, you're good to go. I'm gonna tap my shutter button. So Leah, go ahead and take a few steps to your left and right. So you can see the camera is tracking Leah. No problem, this is very nice. If we wanted to take the picture, we're going to push the shutter button halfway down to get a focus lock, and then push it down all the way to take the shot. Now, when you are shooting in video, this is going to be continually focusing. So I am in just plain old live view. Leah, come towards the camera, and you're going to see that the camera is still focusing on Leah, even where she stops. I'm not touching the camera in any way. Leah, go ahead and go back and the camera is tracking her face. So that's a very, very nice feature, especially when you're shooting with a video. Now, something that's really cool about face detection is you can change whose face it is on. If you have more than one person in the shot, you can jump back from face to face. And again, when you're ready to take the picture, halfway depression, takes the shot. Now, something else that's really cool about the face detection and tracking method is that if we did not want to focus on Leah's face, but some, some other object that's moving, we can just pick that object out, in this case, her iPhone. Go ahead and come towards us, Leah. Go ahead and stop. Now let's watch it. See how it focuses like that? Come a little bit forward, a little bit more, see how far we can get. Stop, it's probably too close. Let's see if it focuses. Yeah, it focuses great. So that is a really cool feature in that the face detection and tracking mode works in two different ways. You either select the face or select an item. One of the very cool features about this new live view focusing is that we have the ability to let the camera actually take the shot. 
If you don't see this option, just toggle your info button. And down here in the bottom left-hand corner, we have this picture of the back of a camera that says off. We touch that. This is going to tell the camera to take the picture when focus lock is achieved. So we're going to touch on Leah's face. The camera is focusing and it just takes the picture. And this works for, for really anything. If we want to focus on those trees, we touch it over there. So the camera is focusing, takes the picture. And I'm not even touching the shutter button. This is pretty interesting and revolutionary because it allows photographers to just touch on the screen, the camera focuses, and when it gets a focus lock, it's gonna take the picture. So we're not even using the shutter button anymore. Again, we have some other live view focusing options. We have the flex zone multi, flex zone single, in the autofocus quick mode, which uses the camera's focusing squares. Another cool thing is that you can change your camera settings from live view, not even being in the Q mode. This is really useful, again, if you're shooting video and you want to preview the exposure of your shot. Tap the shutter button. We can tap the info button and get a histogram. You get lots of different cool information features on the camera. So the T4i, although functionally it is very similar to the T3i, the touchscreen monitor changes everything about how photographers interact with their cameras. I know the cost, I think it's an extra $100 as of this recording, but I would say it's definitely worth it because the operational efficiency is greatly improved. It's gonna take fewer steps for you to change your settings or to access the menu or to view images. And so I'm very impressed with the T4i. I don't think a firmware update is going to load this on like the 5D Mark III or the 7D simply because you need a physical overlay in the monitor for this to occur. So we're not gonna see a firmware update, I'm pretty sure, but I would pretty much bet money that on most, if not all of the future cameras from Canon coming out will probably have this feature and it is outstanding. In any event, if you do have a T4i and you want to learn to use it to its utmost potential, I have a training video available for you and you can order it from the following link.